listen up. This is for you, you blacks, Hispanics, you Native American Indians. We and that knowing the time that now it is high time. Now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It is time to awake out of sleep to who you are. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are a chosen people unto the most high God. I'm gonna show you that. Give me Deuteronomy in 76. I'm gonna show you that you blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are the best people walking on this planet. But guess what? You just don't know it. Because in slavery, the Bible was reintroduced to your people and then taught to you wrong. But I'm gonna show you right now in the Bible that you are the best people walking on the planet. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh-huh. But thou art in holy people. But thou art what? But thou art in holy people. Read. Unto the Lord thy God. Unto who? The Lord thy God. Uh-huh. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. He did what? Have chosen thee. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The Most High God said he chose you. The Most High God said he chose you. I want you to hold that, and we're going to figure out who the Most High God is talking to. Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's figure out who he chose. Let's figure out who he chose. It's high time, Israel, that you wake up out of slumber, out of sleep, to who you are. Give me that, Deuteronomy 1 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh-huh. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. So these be the words which Moses spoke unto all Israel. Read. On this side of Jordan. On this side of Jordan. Where? In the wilderness. Where? In the wilderness. All right. The uh, Most High God was speaking through Moses, and he was speaking to the children of Israel. You understand? On this side of Jordan in the wilderness. So go back to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. But thou art in holy people. Holy means to be separate, to be set apart. Okay? Read. Unto the Lord thy God. Unto who? The Lord thy God. Uh -huh. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So the Most High God chose you, Israel, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, that you are a chosen people That's right. unto the Most High God. But you just don't know. We went into slavery because we broke God's laws. I'm going to show you that. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 15. All right, yeah, finish that out. The Lord that God have chosen thee to be a special people above all people that are upon the face of the earth. No, below. Above all people. On, on the right side of. Above all people. On the left side of. Above all people. So I just want to make sure that you Israelites understand what's going on here. We're going to read this from the top. Read it from the top one more time so we know who the Most High God chose. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. But thou art in holy people. That means being separate. Read. Unto the Lord thy God. To the Most High God. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people. A special people. Unto himself. Unto himself. Above. All people above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That are upon the face of the earth. So let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Read. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So hearken diligently means if you listen to the Most High God. If you listen to the Most High God, what's going to happen, brother? To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations wait, of the earth. Wait a minute. That word above came out again. Sister, y'all come, come up. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Okay, all praise to the Most High God, brother. Listen. What we bring out is that the Israelites went into slavery for breaking God's laws. What we just read in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1, is that if we listen to the Most High God, we will be above all people. I'm sure you heard that. 
and, and the number of you scriptures that we brought out. So that's what we read in Deuteronomy 28 and 1. It says if we listen to the Most High God, what will happen? We will be above all nations. Now we're about to bring out Deuteronomy 28 and 15. We're going to see if, what happens if we don't listen to the Most High God. You understand? Y'all with us? Okay, read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But it shall come to pass, if thou willest not hearken unto the voice. Now stop. Come to pass means it will happen. Y'all understand that? Okay, read. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if you don't listen to the voice of the Lord thy God, read. To observe to do all his commandments. To observe to do all his commandments. Read. And his statutes. And his statutes. These are like bylaws and sub laws and whatever or not. Read. Which I command thee this day. Uh huh. That these that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. That shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So if you don't listen to the Most High God, these curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. Now we're about to go into some of these curses. We're going to see if some of these curses fit our people, our nationality of people. We're going to see if these curses fit these people that are on um, this side, this side of this, this side. Because if you look at this side, these are the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? On this side is what the other nations call us. On this side of the side is what the Bible calls us, what the Most High God calls us. All right? So read uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 48. We're going to bring out some curses right here. And let's see if your nation and people fit this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Read. Therefore, shall thy serve thine enemy. So the Bible says you're going to serve your enemy, sis, sisters. Okay, read. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. In what? In hunger. In hunger. And in thirst. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. So the Bible says you will serve your enemy in hurt, hunger, or excuse me, uh, uh, what is that? In hunger. In hunger. And in thirst. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. So let's break this scripture down right here. Hunger. Where do you go to to get your groceries? Where do you shop to get your groceries? Grocery store, right? Kroger, Publix, Walmart, Whole Foods. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Did anybody that owned those establishments, establishments look like me or you? No. So that'd be serving your enemy in hunger because you have to go to the grocery store. Those establishments are not owned by these people. Uh, what's the next one? In hunger and in thirst. And in thirst. So when you pay your water bill, who are you paying your water bill to? Are you paying to somebody that look like me or you? No. When you go get, grab an Aquafina, Dasani, or anything like that, we don't bottle that stuff up. You understand? I'm about to bring it out. I'm about to bring it out. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. So the textiles, the, the actual fabrics. If you want to go get, if you want to make our own shirts or our own clothing, you got to go to another nation's people to get those fabrics. Now we got to go into what you just brought up. Read. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. So brothers that got to get hair products for their hair. Uh, I'm sure you guys look like you guys do hair. Tissues and whatnot. So those products that you're getting for our people, you're going to another nation to buy. Okay, what about your driver's license? What about your birth certificate? What about e everything, right? You want to get your nails and your toes done. You got to go to another nation of people. You understand to get those things. So that's serving your enemy in want of all things. Read, 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 read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So, I'm sure, you, I'm sure you sisters are familiar with slavery. Did this not happen to our people? Y'all seen roots. We had yokes of iron upon our necks, right? Read that again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck till he have destroyed you. So when we came out of slavery, or when slavery, uh, uh, the chains came off, guess what? We were mentally destroyed. We went right back to the slave master. You understand? Once you get the mind, you got the body, you got the soul. You can control anyone. You got a dog, right? And you want to keep the dog in, 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 the, uh, in, in, in the yard, which you can leash on for a time period. Once that leash comes off, guess what? He's already been broken. You understand? So, read that from the top. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore, shall they serve thine enemy. Thy enemies. The Bible says that you will serve your enemies. You understand? Read. Which the Lord shall sin against you in hunger. In hunger. And in thirst. And in thirst. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. And in want of all things. And in want of everything. Everything that you want, you got to go to another nation for. Everything. Read. 
and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Continue reading. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee uh, from far. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from the end of the earth. From the ends of the earth. As swift as the eagle flying. As swift as who? As swift as the eagle flying. As swift as the eagle flying. Read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So when this nation came from far, as swift as the eagle flying, was we speaking their language or did they teach us the language? They taught us the language, sis. We weren't speaking their language. Let's get some more curses. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and uh, 30, 37, 32. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Uh -huh. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. So your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people. When we went into slavery, our sons and our daughters were given it to another people. We went into slavery, guess what? You got an auction block, right? Y'all seen the movie 12 Years of Slave, I'm sure. So when those children got separated from their mother, right? There was no might in thy hand to, to, to get them back. You know what I'm saying? We, we went into slavery, they put our children, excuse me, that's my brother, that's my sister, they separated. Right? And then we went off to wherever, and they went off to wherever, and then we never saw them again. So read that again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 32. Uh -huh. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So we're going to be looking for them all the day long, like I just explained. When we got in that auction, that auction block, okay, slaves were the first entities we sold on the stock market, sis. You understand? So when we got on that auction block, the, the slave man, one slave master bought this child, one slave master bought this child, bought the mom, bought the father, we were sent, uh, uh, separated, and then our eyes were feeling for the long all day long. Read, read. And there shall be no might in thine hand. We couldn't get those, those sisters and brothers and those mothers and fathers back. There was no might in our hand to get them back. You understand? Brother, you got a question? You got a question, brother? You understand what's going on over here? Uh, all praises. Give me your um, Bible. We're bringing out curses. We're bringing out the curses that the Most High God would put upon the children of Israel if they didn't follow God's laws. All right? We need to see if you guys, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians fit those curses. Continue with some of these curses. Let's go. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, the verse 37. Uh -huh. And thou shalt be an astonishment. Thou shalt be an astonishment. A proverb. A proverb. And a byword. And a byword. Among all nations. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Among all nations, whether the Lord thy God shall lead thee. So we would be an astonishment. When you look at your nation of people, right? Who dominates the, 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 the sports world? We do. That's an astonishment. Every nation looks at us like, damn, look at them people. They can ball out of control. Everybody knows LeBron James, right? Everybody knows who Michael Jackson was, right? Everybody knows who all these, these uh, so-called prestigious black, black athletes or actors or whatever. They just astonish at how we move and how we operate. You understand? Uh, 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 Proverbs. A, and, and thou shalt be an astonishment and a proverb. And a proverb. Sister, a proverb is like a famous saying. We're going to get the, one, the most famous one that we're known for. Anything you want to hide from a nigga, where you put it? In a book. So every nation knows that about this nation, about these nation, uh, these group of people right here. What about, uh, you have a job? You work for yourself. Okay, a lot of us, we, we work for uh, the other nations. So what ends up happening is the proverb that, that, that's among the other nations they look upon us. Brother, you late for work with them. You understand? That's a proverb because they look at black people for you know, always being late for work. Color people time, CP time. Exactly, exactly. So that's a proverb. It's a famous saying that everybody knows about a particular group of people. Read. And a byword. And a byword. Now this one right here is, 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 a, is a really good one. What do they call you here in America today? Uh, no, not your name. I'm saying the uh, the nationality. African American. So if you take, if we break down the word African American, right? Let's break it down real quick. Let's get some history. Leo Scipio's Africanus. You understand? That's an Italian white man. Uh, he basically went to Africa, conquered Africa, 
for the second king of war. So he stood on part of the land, hey, I'm gonna name this land after me. Leo Scipio's Africa, white Italian man, right? Let's take America, America's Vespucci, all right? It's another white Ita Italian man, Navigate, okay? Leo Scipio's Africanus, America's best future. Two white men, right? Have two white men ever made a black baby? So why are we calling ourselves African Americans? Right. Right. These are two white men. Two white men never made a black baby. So we gotta stop the buck. The buck stops here, right now, right. today. That's right. We gonna teach you who you are. Right. These are. other nations have lied to you for centuries upon centuries. We are not African Americans, right. right? But that's what they told you. You know what I'm saying? And if if, 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 if if nobody comes and stops that, nobody comes and edify you, then guess what? You continue to run through it all your life. That's what your grandmother told you. That's what your great-grandmother told you. That's what your mother told you. And so you're going to continue with that. You understand? A proverb in the Bible, among all the nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. A proverb in a byword. Nigger, coon, monkey. Afro-American, African-American, color, black, black, Jamaican. Black is a color in the crayon box. You understand? We are not that. We have to wake up to who we are. We are the children of Israel. We are a special people, man. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Let me show you something, sis. This, this scripture right here, man, there should be no, no denying this scripture right here. It's plain and simple as that. We're going to bring it out. We're going to break this thing down right quick. This is Deuteronomy chapter 68. Excuse me, chapter uh, 28, verse 68. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. What? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. And the Lord said that he shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. Now, Egypt is a Greek word that's synonymous with bondage. We're going to prove that right here. Give me Exodus 20. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 2. Read. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Read that one more time from the top, brother. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Are you, are you guys familiar with the uh, Great Exodus? Okay, yeah. You familiar? Okay, so what happened was when we, when the Most High God delivered us out of Egypt, the wilderness, like we read it in one morning, okay? Let my people go, right. So during that time, when he came out, he delivered us out of Egypt. So he was saying, I am the Lord thy God that hath delivered thee out of the house of bondage. So now we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 28 68 so you understand what Egypt means. Because and they, they were headed to Jerusalem. They were headed to their land. So Egypt and Jerusalem is, is pretty close. You wouldn't need a ship to go back to Egypt. So that's why it's showing that Egypt is synonymous with bondage. It means bondage. Okay? Follow me? All right, read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 68. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So the Most High God is going to bring you into bondage again with ships. With ships. With ships, read. By the way, we're out. I spake unto thee. So, by the way, I'm telling you, sis, the Most High God said He was going to put you into bondage again with what? With ships. With ships, read. By the way, we're out. I spake unto thee. By the way, I'm telling you, read. Thou shalt see no more again. We were headed to Jerusalem. We're not going to see that homeland no more. Read. And there ye shall be sold. You shall be what? And there ye shall be sold. You are going to be sold Man. unto your enemies. Unto who? Man. Unto your enemies. Brother, I don't Man. think they heard you, man. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For bond men uh -huh. and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Meaning no man is going to be able to save you. Was, was anybody able to save us when we was in on these Rolls, when we was packed up like sardines, when we was getting pissed on, when we was getting vomited on, when we was getting defecated on. Nobody was able to save us out of that. We was getting tossed off ships, killed, you know, all these different atrocities that were happening to us. Was anybody able to save us during this time period? No. No. So, right. So, my question to you, sisters, 
what group of people on the planet was sold to their enemies and then put on ships, or was put on ships and then sold to their enemies. Us, right? And a lot of people don't understand that these these uh these Hispanics as well, they got put on ships too, sold back up, uh, got put on ships and sold back to Hispanics. So we're bringing out these curses that fit a particular group of people. Now, in your basic knowledge, basic history, do you know any other nation that this happened to that were put on ships as a nation and sold to the enemies? Nah. Right. The only people that were put on ships and sold to these people right here. You had indentured servitude, but these folks got pets. Exactly. So, what we bring up is that you blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. You are a special people, a chosen people. Give me first Peter uh, 2 and 9. Okay, Deuteronomy 10 and 12. So, sis, what we're about to bring out right now, now that you know that you're an Israelite, there's certain things that the Most High God requires. You understand? So, we're going to bring that out right now. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. Uh -huh. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? Uh -huh. But to fear the Lord thy God. To fear the Lord thy God. To walk in all his commandments. To walk in all his commandments. And to love him. And to love him. And to serve and the Lord thy God. And to serve the Lord thy God. With all thy heart. With all thy heart. And with all thy soul. And with all thy soul. To keep thy commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep. The commandments of the Lord. So we're supposed to keep the commandments of the Lord. Remember in Deuteronomy 28 and 15, it says, If you will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. You understand? So now what we're about to bring out is some of the some of the uh, some of the commandments. You understand? Some of the things that we broke as a nation. You understand? This is probably when it's a slave. So to come out of slavery, we gotta we gotta return back. Repent. We gotta repent. You know what I'm saying? Read. The woman! Shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So we got one more time. Listen to the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the Bible says a woman shall not wear what pertaineth, what pertaineth unto a man. Okay. You read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So what is a woman's garment that a man should not be putting on? A skirt, exactly, what else? A bra, what else, what else? Heels. Heels, all of that. So, on the other end, what is something that a woman puts on that pertains to a man? You don't know? There, 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 there's, there's no such thing as female pants. So why would you want to female pants? You know, give me, for her give to wear, uh, pants. Look, I'm standing here now, the wind blows up, uh -huh. I'm going to close, right? So why wouldn't you want me to have a cup in my front? Sis, understand that when you wear pants, certain things, you get UTIs. You understand? Know UTIs. That's why you don't do But no, but there's, there's no such thing as women's pants. But most of God just said there's no such thing as women's pants. Well, what? Give me Bridget. Give me Bridget. Yeah, matter of fact, pants, they have zippers on them, right? Most of them do. Yeah. So with that, with that being said, what is a woman doing with a zipper? What does she have that she needs to zip down? But okay, I'm, I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you where we were, where where on the bridges where the men wore pants. Okay. It was for the men. It was not for the women. Okay. Then I'm gonna show you something else. All right, read. The Book of Exodus, chapter twenty-eight, and verse forty-two. <laughs> and thou shalt make them linen breeches. So we know what breeches are. Our, our grandmother's mother said breeches. Pull your, pull your, pull your breeches up. You black men, you, you, you Israelites, pull your breeches up. That's right. You stop wearing them behind your, uh, below your, your tail. Free, free. And thou shalt make them linen breeches uh -huh. to cover the nakedness. So they shall make them linen breeches. For the loins, even until thy thigh. Until thy thigh. They shall reach, and they shall be upon Aaron uh -huh. and his sons. Aaron and who? And his sons. Yeah, they, should, they, should, they should make them linen bridges, and they should be for Aaron. Aaron was uh, Moses' brother and their sons. 
You understand that? You know, I got to go ahead and one question. Go ahead. So y'all are Israel United Christ. Yes, ma'am. So when Christ comes, are we not relieved from all of this right now? Let me show you. Give me Titus 2 and 11. He came to, to satisfy let the first let me, let, me, let me show you something, sis. Because what, what, what we get mixed up in the, in the Christian church no. is that, oh, we got grace. Oh, we can just continue to do what we want to do. Hold on one second, bro. We got grace. Let me show you what grace is. Because a lot, we, we know that the most high God, uh, excuse me, the most high God sent his son to, 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 to redeem actually the children of Israel. It's not the whole world. That's what the, that's what the Christian Bible, excuse me, the Christian church teaches. You understand? But I'm going to show you what grace is. All right? Read. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 11. All right, read. For the grace of God that bring him salvation. For bring him what? That bring him salvation. So that's what you want to know. You want to know what brings us salvation, right? Read. Have appeared to all men. Uh-huh. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. Denying ungodliness. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. We shall live soberly. We shall live soberly. Righteously. Righteously. And godly. And godly. In the present world. In this present world. So to answer your question, sis. The grace that we have is to deny ungodliness. We have the time. That's what we have the time to get ourselves together. When Christ comes back, if you're not keeping God's laws, you're going to get put to Christ death. Christ, listen, give me five. Give me Matthew 5, bro. Let me show you something. Read it. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. Read that again. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. Christ did not come to destroy the law, sis. Read. Or the prophets. Or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill. So I just gave you an example of what fulfillment was. Read. For burning, I say unto you. Come on. Till heaven and earth pass, not one jot, no one tittle, shall no wise pass from the law. Has heaven and earth passed away, sis? So it says not one jot, no one tittle. What is a jot? Exactly. Read. Read from the top, bro. For, for verily I say unto you, Read. So heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. So in no wise shall it pass from the law, sis. The law is not done away with. Right. What the Christian church teaches you is that the laws are done away with and you can do whatever it is that you want to do. Right. That is not true. We still have to keep the law. If, if you got Christ and his apostles out here teaching the law and they're keeping the law, what makes you think that we ain't supposed to be doing the same? Because all things are beneficial and all things are sweet. You can do all things and all things are beneficial. Give me Psalm 5, uh, Give me Psalm uh, Okay, bring it out. Bring it out. To, to all be fulfilled. What's for? Therefore, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments uh -huh. and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So if you break one of these commandments, you shall be called the least in the kingdom, and you're not going to make the kingdom. You make kingdom. No, you will not make the kingdom, sis. Give, uh, give, me, give, me give me Luke um, 13 and 5. Give me Luke 13 and 5. Let me show you something, sis. If you're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, you're not going to make the kingdom of heaven. That's, that's, that's right. That's point blank, period. The, the Christ came to teach the law because these Israelites were breaking the law and they continued to break the law. So he is the redeemer of these Israelites to come back to repentance. We're supposed to be repenting, turning away from the things that we, we, we were doing in the past. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 13 and verse 5. Watch this. I tell you, nay, nay, but except ye repent. So repent means to turn away from, sis. Read. Ye shall all likewise perish. You shall all likewise perish. So if you're not keeping God's laws, you're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. You have to be, you have to, you have to make supplication. You have to repent. Give me um, give me, give me uh, first Kings 8, 47. Let me show you something, sis. Because it all goes back to Israel breaking God's commandments. Okay? That's that's the whole point. That's the whole that's, that's, that's all the Bible is talking about. It's the Israelites breaking God's commandments, Christ coming back again and redeeming. So, who came back then? We didn't come with those books. We they did come with those books. We came, the Africans came to America with those books. Or did we get them from the people who brought us? So how do you remember? Re remember when I remember when I told you that the book was it was reintroduced to us long and stated. Okay, okay. Remember when I told you it was reintroduced to us so long and stated. We always had the books. Okay. You understand? I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring this out and I'm gonna bring um I'm gonna bring something else and I'm gonna show you. The book of First Kings chapter eight verse forty seven. Uh huh. Verse forty six. If they sin against thee, 
For there is no man that sinneth not, uh-huh. and thou be angry with them, uh-huh. and deliver them to the enemy. So we got delivered to the enemy because we sinned. Free. So that they carry them away captive unto a land of the enemy, for a near. Yet, if they shall be think themselves. Listen, do you know what the think means? It means to remember. If you remember, remember who you are. Okay, so we got carried away captive, okay, in the land of our enemy, or whatever. And now, the Most High God is saying, let them be shall think yourself, because we sin. Uh-huh. Read. And the land, whether they were carried captive, they repent and make supplications and, unto thee. And do what? They repent and make supplications unto thee. And the land of them, which led them away captive, say, say what? we have sinned. We have sinned. And sin. have done perversely. And done perversely. We have committed wickedness. We committed all types of wickedness. You understand? Adultery, fornication, sleeping with the wives of the other nations. We did all this wickedness that we were not supposed to do. We had laws statutes and commandments to live by, sis, read. And so, return unto thee. Return, it goes that, that, that return again. Read, repent, return. With all thy heart. With all thy heart, your heart is your mind. You can read that in Mark chapter seven, verse 21. It refers to your mind, your mind, and your heart, read. And with all thy soul. With all thy soul. In the land of thy enemies. In the land of your enemies. Which led them away captive. Which led us away captive, And read. pray unto the land. And read. Which thou gave us unto the fathers. The, the, and, the most high God gave us the, the Jerusalem as our land that's to the east. So we're supposed to pray to the east. Read. And to the city which thou hast chosen. Jerusalem. And the house which I have built for thy name. Then if thou, then if thou, their prayers and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place. So if we repent, turn to the most high with all our heart and all our soul, pray to the east, say that we have sinned and we have done all this wickedness, Upon the face of the earth, then he said the most high God, the most high God said he would give our prayers. You understand? Let me let me get uh office. Yeah, read out. I'm just gonna read you something real quick. This is a book for Babylon Temple 2 about us having the Bible before slavery. Okay. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws and written records right. with them. That's right. This assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization. Okay. So, you got a question, go ahead, bro. Right. No, it's not. We are, we're not African. Give me a, uh, uh, we, we just said that we have an advantage over the African tribes, which was we kept our culture. He's referring That's to saying that the African Brother, he's referring to the Israelites keeping their culture. Right. You see I what I'm saying? That there's that a difference. With, there's there's, there's, there's a difference between. Do, do you understand that there's a difference between Africans and Israelites? Are you aware of that? Okay. So, what's the question? I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying not. to figure out how these African tribes didn't keep their culture because he said we had an advantage over them because we kept. He's saying. We're the Israelites, we kept our culture. Right. Tribe, they did keep their culture. I'm trying to figure out how the African tribes did not keep their culture. Is that what, is that what it said? Mm-hmm. That's not what, I don't think that's what it's saying, bro. I'm on page 80, page 90. I'm going to grow up a little bit. <laughs> the Jews imported into the western part of Africa a superior material, educational, and moral culture soon after 300 AD. And this cultural advancement was not duplicated or exceeded until the ascendancy of the Mohammedan leader Mansa Musa of Mali in 1312. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. So we had our records, we just didn't keep them. That's the reason why we got put into these different the Bible, the Bible is our history book, bro. So we had these records, we had this knowledge of who we were. Give me, um, give me, um, 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 um give me Psalms. The book of Psalms. Are, are you still confused? The, 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 the book is saying that we carried these laws, we carried our books, we carried our records with them. But the, the, what ended up happening is the Israelites didn't, didn't apply those things. You understand? They weren't applying the, the knowledge that they had. That makes sense now? Oh, I'm trying to wrap my head around. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right, so the 
Israelites are the people who were led from uh, the Moses, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, so he led us out of us in captivity or whatnot. Uh -huh. To freedom or whatnot. How do we go from being led by Moses to back into us? Okay, that's a good question. That's a good question. So what happened, brother, is that when we were headed out of Egypt, give me um give me give me give me uh Joshua the twenty five. I'm going to show you something about this, bro. The Israelites, we were led, we were led, we, were on, we came out of Egypt and we were on our way to uh, 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 the promised land, which was Jerusalem. But you got to understand that we continued to sin as a nation, bro. You see what I'm saying? That's how we ended up going back into captivity. So, I mean, we were going wrong while we were with Moses. We were going wrong while we were with Moses, yes, sir. Let me show you. We were doing, we were doing all kinds of wickedness. We was doing what we wanted to do because we had no king. You understand? We had no king. The most our God said we didn't need a king, but Israel wanted a king. You understand? Judges. The book of Judges, chapter 21, and verse 25. Three. In those days. In those days. There was no king in Israel. There was no king in Israel. Okay? Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Every man did, did what was right in his own eyes. So they did what they wanted to do. They just continued to do what they wanted to do. They did not listen to the Most High. You understand? Did that answer your question? Yeah, I mean, I get, um, so what did Moses do? He just abandoned us afterwards? Or? Well, you know, Moses passed. Yeah, okay, yeah, and then so the, 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 leader, the, leader, the leadership went to uh, to, uh, to Joshua. Joshua went bad after Moses passed. Say again? It went bad after Moses passed. It went bad after Moses passed. It went bad when, 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 when Solomon fell. It went bad when David fell. It went bad with all these leaders that we had fed, all these different kings. When you read the book of Kings, it talks about all the kings that were wicked in Israel, bro. You see what I'm saying? So it was going bad after that, way after that, and all of that. Mm -hmm. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 12. Uh -huh. There is a way which seemeth right unto a, unto a man. So there's a way that seems right unto a man. Read. But the end thereof are the ways of death. But the end thereof are the ways of death. So again, when we read in, in, in Joshua 21, uh, Judges 21 and 25, they were saying that Israel went off because they were doing what they wanted to do. They were continuing in wickedness, bro. You see what I'm saying? So as long as you continue in wickedness, the most high not, God not doing with you. Give me Hosea 5 and 13. Give me Hosea 5 and 13. I'm going to show you that the most high not dealing with us when we ain't sin, bro. The book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. So the Most High God says, I will go and return to his place until what? Until they acknowledge their offense. Until they acknowledge their offense. So the Most High is not dealing with us, bro, until we acknowledge the fact that we have sinned. What we read in King, uh, 1 Kings 8 and 47, we have to make supplication. We have to repent in the land where we were carried captive. You understand? So until that day, as a nation, bro, as a nation, we're not going to get out of this captivity that we have. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.